Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist with over a decade of experience, and I specialize in the pre-colonial archaeology of North America's eastern woodlands. Today I want to talk about a very enigmatic artifact type that most people outside of archaeology have never even heard of. Most people will at least be familiar with the idea of chipstone spear points or arrowheads and pottery and basketry and things like that, but not many people have ever heard of banner stones. We really still don't understand them very well. These artifacts are found all over the eastern woodlands, and they are exclusively made during the Archaic period. And they first appeared sometime before 8,000 years ago and disappeared sometime around 3,500 years ago. And they aren't found anywhere else in the Americas at all. So what a banner stone is, is a piece of rock that has been pecked into shape and often uh, ground and polished. And it has a hole called the perforation that's drilled through its center, usually around a centimeter in diameter. And following a kind of usual trend with American artifact types, they're both very mundane versions of these, as well as very elaborate and extravagant versions. The mundane versions, we're fairly confident, are attached to atlatls to act as a counterweight. I've talked about the atlatl and throwing spear system in a couple of other videos that I'll put in the links to in the description. Uh, you'll also find links to any other videos that I've done that I reference in this video. You'll find those down there. Anyway, so in the Shell Mound Archaic sites, which I've already also discussed previously, um, these more crude banner stones have been found closely associated with atlatl hooks and handles. Later on in this video, you'll see some pictures of some more diverse types and it'll be tempting to draw com connections between these and the stone mace heads that have been found in Neolithic Europe. But sometimes these pieces are found all in a line with other atlatl parts. So you'll have a, like a handle, the banner stone, and then the atlatl hook at the other end. So they're very clearly being attached to atlatls, at least in some, in some cases. In these cases, the only thing that's missing is the actual wooden rod that holds the entire atlatl apparatus together. Uh, which rots away faster than things like bone, antler, stone that uh, these other parts or components are made of. Um, the idea is that this keeps the whole spear throwing apparatus balanced so that a hunter can more comfortably keep the spear cocked in a ready to throw position for long periods of time. And pretty much as soon as the artifact type appears around 8,000 years ago, they're found in the graves of adult men on shell mound archaic sites. Um, the more elaborate versions are kind of harder to pin down. They have the same size hole drilled into them, so they seem to be attached to something at least similar to the atlatl, but these elaborate forms are often found in burials or in caches rather than in midden deposits where we find more mundane types. Um, a researcher named David Lutz has put a lot of work into compiling, compiling information about banner stones and his website has a lot of really great pictures that really gives you a sense of how much diversity there is in these kinds of artifacts and i'll leave a link to that website in uh, the description as well so here's a really simple version of what is called an hourglass type and you can see that it's not finished the perforation has only been started being drilled on the bottom with some kind of a uh, hollow drill bit like a cane like like river cane Here's another one of the more basic types. This is an oval tube type from South Carolina. This one is a quartz bottle shaped banner stone from Mississippi and a crescent from Georgia made of a material called gneiss. Here we have what's called a lunate type from New York made of slate. This one is really unusual. It's called a geniculate made from a banded slate also. And you can see that it has an ovate hole drilled in instead of a circular one like most of the others. And it has incised lines around the arm. We don't really know where this one was originally found because it bounced around a bunch of private collections for years before being donated to a museum. Here's what's called a double notched butterfly for the wing shaped lateral parts and the deep notches that lead down to the perforation. And this one's from Ohio. Here's a quartz butterfly from Illinois. Most of these butterfly styles are found north of the Ohio River in the Illinois, Indiana, Ohio area. This one here is a textbook example of a Wisconsin wing type. Um, it's made of a granite, and this particular piece was found in Iowa. Here's a knobbed lunate type from Indiana made out of a banded slate. And I'll leave a link to that website uh, in the description as well. They have high resolution photos of uh, 93 different banner stones available for you to look through. 
But what's somewhat curious is that the very elaborate versions are more closely associated with the areas on the periphery of the Shell Mound archaic territory where the very mundane forms are kind of first found. So north of the Ohio River along the uh, and along the Piedmont east of Appalachia, and even in New England, we have these winged banner stones appearing around 8,000 years ago. And these were connected to other atlatl parts associated with human burials in, in the New England specimens. So the elaborate styles are nearly as old as the mundane ones, and in some contexts, we actually do find them in association with atlatl parts. Later on, these elaborate forms were also found in old copper complex burials and the copper smithing cultures from the Great Lakes that I've, I've talked about before. But across the eastern woodlands, the banner stone ceases to be manufactured after about 3,500 years ago, shortly before the end of the Archaic period. Now, can we say that these were never made as mace heads or as part of bludgeoning weapons? Comparisons might be made to the ground flint artifact known as the Nouth Mace in Ireland, for instance. And no, we can't rule that out entirely, but we do know that they were usually found in association with atlatl parts, and it may even be that the atlatl was connected to a banner stone. Um, the, the Part of the reason that atlatls were connected to banner stones was that it could double as a sort of club ad hoc as, as needed. So that's all I've got for this one. Um, I've put links to all the previous videos that I've referenced in the discussion section so you can review that information. And if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.